as part of Russia's attempts to improve its aviation industry and attain self-sufficiency in aircraft manufacturing, the Tupolev Tu-214 is currently undergoing substantial modernization. The development of a flying laboratory version of the aircraft is a critical component of this modernization. Tupolev has restored a stored Tu-214 to airworthiness and modified it to function as a flying laboratory for the testing of Russian-made systems and components. The objective of this initiative is to substitute foreign-built components with domestically produced alternatives. The aircraft, which was previously manufactured in 2006, underwent a significant upgrade, which included the installation of new radar technologies, collision warning systems, and computing devices. The Tu-214 Flying Laboratory recently completed its first flight at the Kazan Aviation Plant. The Tupolev JSC personnel piloted the aircraft for 1.5 hours at an altitude of 10,000 meters, and all systems operated seamlessly. This represents a critical milestone in the modernization of the Tu-14 platform and the validation of the reliability of Russian-made systems. Modernization initiatives include the following, the reduction of airframe weight, the transition to composite materials to enhance structural integrity, the digitization of documentation to improve efficiency, and the upgrading of interiors to improve passenger comfort. The objective of these modifications is to guarantee the T214's reliability and performance while simultaneously enhancing its competitiveness in the global aviation market. Nine components of the Tu-214 have already been substituted with domestically produced alternatives. Deputy Head of the Ministry of Industry and Trade, Gennady Abramenkov, recently disclosed this information during an extended meeting of the Federation Council Committee on Economic Policy. As part of the Tu-214 program, certification is currently underway, the aircraft flies regularly. Nine components have been import substituted and are being certified as part of the aircraft. For 46 systems, we are conducting test flights in a flying laboratory. At the same time, we are preparing for mass production, said Abramenkov. Additionally, he observed that the Kazan Aviation Plant, eh, has already received substantial capital investments. Tens of thousands of square meters of space are currently being hired for production according to him. The facility is being equipped with metal cutting apparatus under the supervision of the ministry. Dozens of machines are now being delivered every week and commissioning is underway. More than 50 new machines were installed just in March. By the end of the year, we plan to fully equip the Kazan facility for mechanical processing, Abramenkov explained. He further stated that the work conducted at KAZ is essential for the entire aviation industry. The re-equipment has essentially re-established the production of fabrication centers for large-sized parts, according to the deputy minister. In the past, this type of production did not exist in the country. The Stank Group has mastered this. Now another organization is developing large-scale riveting machines, which also were not produced domestically before. A third organization is developing automatic positioners for final assembly. These will allow us to automatically join fuselages and detachable wing parts, automating the assembly process. These three technologies will finally allow us at the Kazan site to move from one-off aircraft production to mass conveyor production. That's the result we've achieved through this re-equipment, Abramenkov concluded. As a reminder, numerous airlines are anticipating the arrival of aircraft from Kaze. The Tupolev planes were abandoned by one of the primary carriers as a result of delivery delays. A comprehensive report is available that contains all pertinent information regarding the revival of Kazan aircraft. Replacement of the foreign equipment is one aspect. Tupolev announced in 2024 the establishment of design teams to redesign the 214 variant. The fate of this team is uncertain as a result of the design agency's failure to provide updates. Furthermore, the aircraft's production has been reduced. The former managing director of JSC Tupolev, Konstantin Timofev, was responsible for the production for less than a year. He left his position in November 2024. That same month, KZ director Nikolai Savitskik left his post. He was replaced by Zufar Mirgalimov. The military programs of Tupolev and the Kazan facility are the primary focus of the new leader, who has a slightly different perspective. 
It is anticipated that he will devote less attention to the 2-2-14 in particular. At the same time, Timofeyev had raised concerns about inaccurate information within the company. This might have led to setting unrealistic production timelines. Timofeyev stated in one of his initial articles published in the classified journal UAC that dishonesty from top to bottom is one of the primary issues. Reports are made one way, but in reality, things are different. And so it is believed that the leadership of the Republic is simply not sufficiently informed. Airlines continue to anticipate the 2214 from KZs, although deadlines have been ignored and aircraft deliveries have been delayed. S7 Airlines acquired 100 aircraft from Kazan, 9 aircraft from Irero, an airline based in Irkutsk, and 12 aircraft from Yakutia. Furthermore, an additional 41 2214s are to be prepared for the State Transport Leasing Company. Now, do you think the 2214 project is a mess? Let us know in the comments. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel. Please also take membership in our channel to encourage us.